So first off, uh, Brian mentioned I uh, work for IBM. Um, I am currently in our Open Cloud Technologies group, um, and we do a lot of upstream activity around cloud computing uh, in OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, uh, as well as the Docker community, which is where I currently am active. Uh, a couple things um, that you may or may not have interacted with uh, that I've worked on upstream, uh, the user namespace support in Docker, uh, the new image specification that includes multi-architecture support, um, and actually, uh, most recently, I created a tool to start uh, helping packagers create those kinds of images that include uh, support for multiple architectures. Um, even before my uh, activity in Docker, I've been in the open source community for quite a while as part of IBM's uh, Linux Technology Center. Uh, but today, I th I'll try and move a little bit quickly through through the charts to see if we can, we can show some interesting things. Uh, but to set the stage, uh, last June at DockerCon San Francisco, uh, I assume some of you, maybe many of you were there, uh, Solomon Hikes got on stage and announced the Open Container Initiative. I believe maybe that day it was announced as the Open Container Project, slight change in the name, but still the same foundation. And the the importance of creating the OCI was to create an open governance uh, structure to, to hopefully consolidate and harmonize uh, the, the entire community around a common container runtime format and a common container image format. And so for uh, not quite a year, uh, there have been a group of folks, you can see uh, this picture may be uh, slightly out of date. I think there's some new members recently. Uh, but under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation collaboration projects, the OCI was born, um, again, with the intent that, that there could be agreement on a common container runtime, even though we know that there are uh, multiple container runtime engines available. So a few more details on OCI again announced uh, last June. Um, obviously, as with any sort of foundation activity, there's that period of time of getting all the right people together, uh, getting charters signed. So um, a good part of last year was spent uh, putting that together. Uh, currently, you can see the, the member companies. Um, and there's been uh, a good amount of work put together on the specification itself. You can see that uh, currently, as of last month, the, the runtime specification itself is at version 0 0.5 with the hope to, um, to reach 1.0 by, by DockerCon this June. Um, this does re include all the core features in, in the specification that you would expect uh, for both Linux but also for Windows, and we'll see in a minute why it includes uh, not just Linux but also Windows. Uh, more recently, the OCI TOB uh, approved a new project under the OCI for the image format. And so that was seeded with uh, the Docker registry 2.2 image spec that I mentioned just a few minutes ago. And that work is really just getting off the ground. Uh, there is a, a 0 0.1 release that uh, just came out a few weeks ago. Uh, I think Vincent Batts and, and Brandon from CoreOS uh, have been working hard to, to get that project off the ground. So this kind of gives you a, a quick picture of OCI on the specification side, but uh, on that same um, day at DockerCon, Solomon announced that not only would we start putting together a specification, but there would actually be a reference implementation, and Run C was available uh, in its initial form there at DockerCon. And so most of uh, the rest of the presentation, we'll talk a little bit about Run C, uh, how it's used today, and, and why it's useful. So Run C is, is effectively a, a client binary wrapper around libcontainer. And if you have um, played with Docker at sort of a lower level, uh, you know that libcontainer has been around for a good while. 
that uh, in the early days, Docker uh, directly called down to LXC, but at some point, libcontainer was assembled as sort of this operating system layer interface uh, to the actual con how the container is, is assembled from the Linux namespaces and other features of the operating system. So Run C was simply a sort of client binary that, that called the libcontainer API. So you could say Run C start and, and have a, a simple basic container. Um, obviously, given that libcontainer has an API, other platforms, other architectures can, can take that API and make their own um, compliant uh, binary using their own primitives and, and system level container concepts. And we'll look at a few examples in a minute. So if you've used the, the Docker command line, you know that it's fairly um, command line option oriented. I can Docker run um, and specify some options like read only, mount this path from the host into this path in the container. Um, here's the image I wanna run and here's the command I wanna run. I wanna run a shell in the Alpine uh, Linux container. So that translated into run C. Run C has the concept Two basic concepts you need to run a container with run C. You need a config, which maps pretty closely to your options to the Docker command line. And I also need my root file system bundle, which is gonna be that set of content, the actual file system content that, that I'll be uh, entered into in my container that would become the root file system. And so here you can see uh, obviously, I couldn't fit an entire config, but just the basic uh, part, the platform. Uh, am I going to have a, a TTY or not? What are the arguments? What's my environment? But that gives you a basic idea of how Run C relates to Docker. So it's great to create um, governance foundations. It's great to have specifications and even a reference implementation. But is anyone using Run C? Is it actually getting exercise today. Well, the interesting thing is that there are already two major users of Run C uh, in the wild, so to speak. Um, we have folks at IBM who have initially put together a proof of concept for the Cloud Foundry Garden container runtime to use Run C under the covers. Uh, that now is the Guardian project and, and has um, commitment that that will be the container executor under that engine. Uh, if you've been following the Docker releases, you know that Docker 1.11, uh, which came out recently, switched from a direct linkage into the libcontainer API to actually using Run C directly. And uh, to be clear, it doesn't actually call Run C directly. Uh, there's another open source project put together by the Docker team, uh, Michael Crosby specifically, uh, put together container D, which sort of separates the Docker engine, which I will call sort of the API and management aspect now, uh, from container D, which is the executor, which calls run C with your bundle, with, with your config. And so one, one of the great features that this will allow in the future, it's not fully implemented in, in Docker 1.11, but the ability to have the Docker daemon and container D and containers all have a separate life cycle. Restarting your daemon doesn't require me to, to restart my containers. Um, restarting container D doesn't force me to, uh, to restart containers. So that's uh, a long awaited uh, functional capability that, that Run C will enable. So what I wanted to, to sort of propose uh, today is that that Run C is actually a great place uh, to sort of innovate at the lower level. So Everett, uh, Everett and my talks are kind of at the, the opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, swarm and, and composition and, and clustering is sort of at the high end. Run C is obviously at the bottom of that stack. But if you're a, um, well, basically I've given here three potential areas of interest that may draw you to to be using Run C as an innovation platform. For one, you may be interested in implementing 
uh, low-level operating system functionality uh, for containers. And so many of the newest capabilities that are available in Docker came up through libcontainer and now run C. Things like PID, C group controls, uh, checkpoint restore is available in run C, but not yet in the Docker daemon. Uh, Setcom came up through uh, libcontainer and run C. And so uh, if, if that's an area of interest, run C turns out to be a great place to, to start that effort. Uh, obviously the runtime is simple. Uh, debugging is simple at that level, and it's really where, um, both in the specification and the reference implementation, those kind of innovations can be worked on. I mentioned a minute ago that given this sort of standard specification and API that um, were you to have a, another idea for containerization or another platform that has different primitives than Linux, uh, you can implement your own uh, implementation of the specification, such as has been done or is un in progress by the Solera Zones folks. So Run Z is an implementation where, uh, again, the same API can be used to, to implement containers on top of zones. Run V is a hypervisor based, so you get the same API, but now you're actually executing a, a small hypervisor. And Intel Clear Containers also uh, is, has been active here. Um, another area, and this is where, you know, for me personally, working in the Docker community, uh, iterative uh, configuration testing, debug of, of sort of low-level issues, it's much simpler for me to, to get my root file system and my config and the Run-C binary and use tools like S-Trace and and other you know, GDB, other, other capable tools, then try and sit on top of the Docker daemon and the Docker API and, and do uh, you know, debug or, or testing new features. And so it turns out, again, Run-C is a, is a great uh, place for that kind of innovation, testing, new platforms. Um, and also I included here just you know, the kinds of companies that are obviously finding uh, run C, a, gr a great place to contribute and operate. Uh, what this doesn't include is that there are obviously others who care uh, about the specification side as well. So the, there are, if you go to GitHub and go to the open containers um, repositories, obviously there's more than run C. There's uh, the, spe the runtime specification now. There's the image format specification. And many others are involved in those efforts as well. I actually realized I, I skipped for a moment. I had mentioned earlier that the OCI specification covers the Windows platform as well, and that's because Docker 1.11, when, the, when we switched to container D and run C, obviously included Windows support as well, so run C is capable to run Windows containers as well. So we have, uh, I think we're good on time. I'd like to demonstrate a few of these capabilities. We're only gonna be able to scratch the surface, uh, but hopefully it'll, if, if the words haven't done it for you, hopefully uh, showing a few things will help you see sort of the simplicity and ease of working with Run-C at the lower level of, of containers. Uh, a few things I'm gonna show you, I'll post these slides on SlideShare uh, so you don't have to hurly try and scratch down a bunch of uh, crazy URLs. But uh, just wanted to give you a, a, a feel for the, some of the things I'll be able to show you. Um, I've got a Run-C binary, which uh, given I'm lazy, I'm just using the one that Docker 1.11 installed on my system. So it's called docker-run-c. Uh, we're gonna look at OCI tools, which again is part of the open containers um, GitHub. And that's a simple generator for a specification and it kind of gives you that nice mapping of, I know a bunch of Docker feature flags. Can I use those with some kind of OCI tool that'll generate the config so I don't have to do it by hand? Um, and then I'll spend most of the time looking at Riddler. Uh, many of you, I hope, know Jesse Frizzell, um, who has, was a Docker for, for a good while, 
has written a ton of awesome tools around containers, still doing amazing things with containers. So we'll look at her tool, Riddler, which can actually, I can point at a Docker container that I've run and say, generate the config for me. And so we'll look at that. And then because of my particular focus area around user namespaces, uh, I'll have a tool where we can actually take a file system out of Docker, uh, just make a directory and map all the, the file ownership. And we'll talk about why that's necessary for user namespaces. Uh, that's a tool that came from Surge Holland, one of the uh, Lex D guys from Canonical. And then another tool from Jess. Uh, again, in Run C, there's no concept of networking. We're, again, at a very basic operating system level. So Jess has a tool, NetNS, which gives you the same kind of Linux bridge networking that you're used to if you're using Docker on your laptop. So let's see, how are we on font size? Let's hope that's reasonable. If not, shout out and we will, um, and let me do some magic for a second because now that we're connected to a projector, I just wanna make sure this is sized properly. So first of all, I said that, um, that there are a set of, of tools that we can use to help us uh, in, if we're gonna try and play with Run C, our first issue we're gonna face is that I, I'd like to have a configuration, a JSON file, and I really don't wanna write that by hand. Um, so I mentioned that OCI tools is a binary that's available. You can get it from GitHub in the open containers uh, uh, repo. And it has two very simple commands. I can generate a new spec or I can validate a bundle. And if I say generate help, uh, yeah, that font size is going to be difficult for that. But you can see that um, they're basically a lot of the same things. So I can set the host name, the user. Uh, I can add and drop capabilities. I can point to where my root file system is. Uh, a lot of the same things you can do at the Docker, command, Docker run command line, I can do that here. But one interesting thing is that um, I can just do that right here and I got a config and I didn't even tell it anything about a root file system or what I wanna run. And that's because there are a set of sort of sane defaults. We know what a container is, what namespaces it's gonna need. We know kind of generally what a, a standard path will, will be. Uh, we know generally what kind of basic capabilities a container will need. And so this is a, um, it may look a little bit daunting, but it's a fairly basic uh, config that just, again, here's, if you know how containers are assembled at the OS layer, I'm gonna get a PID namespace, a network namespace, et cetera. Um, so OCI tools is a very simple way to get me started. I've got a config, um, I can now uh, start a container, but secondly, I'll need a file system. And just to, to start over here, I'm gonna make a new directory called Alpine. And earlier, I ran a container, uh, call, I named it Alpine, and I just ran the date command. And obviously, um, I'm not gonna name this one, but you can see that all that did is it ran the, the very small Alpine container and it output the date. Uh, but now I can use the Riddler tool, which I mentioned. Uh, it's a little more encompassing than the OCI tools. OCI tools gave me a very basic config, but Riddler, um, because it's reading from the Docker container config, it knows a lot more about maybe what I wanna do. If, I, if I've run a container where I've set up volumes and I've, I've set up a lot of complex capabilities, Riddler is gonna read that config from Docker and generate a config.json that matches that container. The other nice thing is that um, Jess, who cares a lot about security, 
uh, Riddler will only generate configs that have user namespaces already enabled, that has a default set comp profile already built in. I don't know if you noticed um, when I opened the config JSON from OCI tools, it didn't have any of those uh, sort of built in by default. I could have added them, I could have generated them, uh, but Riddler does that for me. Um, so let's take, I'm gonna tell Riddler that I want this Alpine container, and maybe my Docker daemon doesn't even have user namespaces enabled, but that doesn't really matter because I can tell Riddler, um, I want the root of my ID space for UIDs and GIDs to be 100,000. And these are pretty standard if you've played with user namespaces. I'm giving a 64K ID space rooted at ID 100,000. And I'm gonna tell it the name of the container from Docker. And so this is gonna connect to the Docker daemon, Docker inspect that Alpine container and generate a config in this directory. So as you can see, this is fairly similar. Now the only thing is, I'd really like to do something more interesting than showing you the date. So I'm gonna say this, I do need a terminal, and I do need, I'd like, I'd like to run a shell. And if I look down further, I see that I actually got user namespace mappings at ID 100,000 for 64K. And it's gonna be a lot, but here's, here's a, a, an entire set comp that's defaulted to not allow the syscalls and then a pretty substantial list of syscalls that it will allow. So, um, so I now have my config JSON, but now I need my file system because as you can see, um, when run C runs, it's gonna need a root file system. And traditionally it looks in a subdirectory root FS to do that. And so I have, um, well I can show it to you quickly, because I think we're doing reasonable on time. Um, I wrote a simple tool that basically I can, I can point to a Docker container and I can say give me the file system of that Docker container but remap all the IDs to the range that I specify. And that is going to use a tool UID map shift there at the bottom to do that mapping. And as I mentioned, that's from the LexD folks. And so if I run 100,000 Alpine, And let me use the right flags for my own tool. I now have a root FS, and it looks like a standard kind of, this is Alpine Linux, very small file system. And you can see the ownership has already been changed to the right IDs. Um, so you would think at this point I could start my container, but guess what? Um, the Ubuntu 16.04 kernel actually has a slight issue when running user namespaces. Uh, we've been working with Canonical and the patch is already in and in a few weeks it'll be available in the updates, but after, you know, this is something we've already debugged and we found out that the a new patch in the Ubuntu kernel um, blocks the remounting of MQ. And if you know what dev MQ is, uh, it's for doing inter-process communication. Well, I know I really don't care about doing inter-process communication when I'm just showing a demo on stage. So I'm gonna delete the mounting of dev MQ from my config. And now I'm able to run my container. Uh, I look like I'm root inside and in the file system, but I'm actually user namespaced. We could go and, and do PS and verify that. So already, I think, hopefully you've seen that, that here's an immediate benefit to run C over uh, Docker, at least at the moment. We have this conflict. 
of user namespaces and the Ubuntu 1604 kernel. If I, if I need to make progress with Docker, I'm kind of dead in the water unless I know how to build Docker and make changes. Here I was able just to change my config and I'm, I'm back up and running at least, you know, if I'm fine without uh, being able to use IPC at, at the moment. Um, the only problem is at this point it's not, it doesn't feel exactly like Docker to me because I have no network. Again, run C is, is fairly simplistic. It doesn't include a whole networking stack. And so if I go back and I move this config out of the way and I run Riddler again, but this time I say I'd like to use a tool called NetNS as a pre-start hook. I have a new config JSON and if I look at the hooks, you can see that it's calling a tool NetNS, which again, I mentioned uh, Jess Frizzell uh, put this tool together. In fact, just like 10 minutes ago, someone from Docker tweeted at Jess and was like, NetNS is the most amazing tool ever. Thank you. Um, it's, again, a great tool for, uh, at this point now, before my container actually executes that shell, it's gonna call NetNS, which will get enough information so that it can set up a Linux bridge in my run C container. So um, the only other issue is that since I regenerated my config, I have to make the same changes. I have to get rid of MQ again. And let's try again. So you see now I have a simple network, again, similar to how Docker operates a Linux bridge. Um, if the Wi-Fi in here and all my settings, oh, they're not okay anymore. Well, that's okay, we're getting out. So, so NetNS has set up a simple uh, bridge with a, a virtual ethernet inside my run C. So again, at this point, I can do most of the things that I could do inside a Docker container, except I now have this added capability where I can quickly uh, make changes. And we have a few minutes left. I was gonna show a few other things, but I thought one interesting thing, uh, setcomp was mentioned uh, in Everett's talk. So let me just sh show a, a quick change. So actually, interestingly, because of Linux capabilities, I don't know how many of you have dug into what Linux capabilities are, but they sort of um, add or they can be added or dropped to a process to allow you access to certain syscalls. And so in the case of Jess's tool Riddler, it's already, not, it's already dropped a lot of capabilities and so I can't even set the host name. Um, I do have a host name here, I can read it. I set it to Alpine in my config. And that's because in my config, here are the capabilities I have. Now this is not usually the hammer you wanna use because cap sysadmin is kinda of like the world. But just for demonstrative sake, let's do that just to show that now I can set the host name and that syscall is allowed. But setcomp is sort of a, 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 a more fine-tuned um, hammer, so to speak, a fine-tuned tool, that if I actually look for the host name uh, API, you can see that it's been allowed here. Remember that, that at the top, we disallowed all, and now we're adding in the actual syscalls that, that we're gonna allow. So if I say, actually kill a process that wants to use that host name, now remember, I've added this cap sys admin, so I should have access to basically almost every syscall, but now I've told uh, setcomp, don't, don't allow uh, set host name. I can see that I can read it, but setcomp has denied me from being able to write it. And so again, run C has maybe, in some cases, more bells and, and whistles and switches than, than you want, but if you're developing at this level, you're debugging at this level, 
it's really an amazing um, tool and capability for doing the kinds of debugging and innovation and new feature development at the OS level. So I think at this point, um, that's probably all the time we have to, to, to demonstrate. So a few things on OCI futures. Um, as I said, the image format specification is just getting underway. Um, again, if you can find Vincent Batts or uh, Brandon Phillips from CoreOS, um, those guys are, are working hard to get that project off the ground. Uh, obviously, uh, if you're interested in sort of this OS level, of containers, um, more users, more contributed implementations would be great. And then you're going to see some of these run C innovations moving to the higher levels. So Checkpoint Restore, there's a PR in Docker to get that exposed via the Docker API. Again, set comp user namespaces. Uh, PID limitations are all um, prior examples. So we'd love to see uh, what the rest of the community can do with OCI, with run C. And uh, IBM uh, has multiple people involved there and uh, looking to do more there as well. So I think with that, I am completely out of time. So I will post the slides. You can follow me on Twitter and uh, get access to them. We have a table back here, and we have a booth. And we'd love to speak to you this week. Thank you.